Imagine a nation smaller than many global cities, yet it builds jets that rival the world's best in missile systems that even superpowers want to copy. Today, we're uncovering how Israel, against all odds, overtook France in jet and missile technology. What happened behind the scenes will shock you and it will change the way you look at modern warfare forever. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel today. We're diving into one of the most surprising shifts in global defense technology, how Israel, a much smaller nation with limited resources, managed to surpass France, a country with decades of aviation history in jet and missile innovation. This didn't happen overnight. It wasn't luck. It was the result of necessity, pressure, and an obsession with survival. Israel understood early on that depending on foreign powers for weapons meant depending on their politics. So they switched from buyers to creators. Meanwhile, France, although powerful, followed traditional development cycles, long timelines, political debates, and massive bureaucratic processes. Israel had no time for that. They had wars every decade, threats every week, and intelligence updates every hour. That urgency pushed them to design faster, test faster, fail faster, and upgrade faster. In this video, you'll discover the exact steps Israel took, how they blended US tech with their own engineering, how they built jets from stolen blueprints, how they revolutionized missile defense, and how they developed battlefield AI years before others. Stay with me because what's coming next will completely change how you see military innovation. Israel's rise began with a shock, the 1967 French arms embargo. France had been Israel's number one supplier, the uh, Mirage a fighter jet, French. The missiles, French. The upgrades, French. Overnight, all deliveries stopped. And instead of collapsing, Israel turned this crisis into the biggest technological transformation in its history. They took the Mirage design, re-engineered it, and created the Kafer, Israel's first home, built fighter jet. But they didn't stop there. They saw that depending on anyone else could mean national suicide. So they created an ecosystem where engineers, pilots, intelligence officers, and software developers worked together, not separately like in Europe. France continued to follow predictable defense cycles, slow, structured, political. Israel built a culture where mistakes were allowed as long as they learned fast. Every real war became a real time test environment. Every enemy tactic became data. Every failure became an upgrade within weeks, not years. This ability to move at combat speed gave Israel an edge that France simply couldn't match, even with its much bigger industry. The embargo meant to weaken Israel instead turned them into one of the fastest growing aerospace powers on the planet. Israel's advantage grew when they mastered avionics, the brain of modern jets. While France focused heavily on airframes and engines, Israel focused on something else, electronic warfare, radar sophistication, and mission systems. These are the tools that decide who wins long before missiles are fired. Israel Aerospace Industries, CIII, and Rafal realized early that modern combat wasn't about who had the fastest jet. It was about who could see first, lock first, and jam first. This shifted the game. Israeli engineers built compact sensors, helmet, mounted displays, and targeting pods that even the U.S. later adopted. Their secret, continuous combat feedback. Israeli pilots fly with engineers in the same command rooms. Every mission generates data. Every dogfight, real or simulated, creates upgrades. France couldn't match this speed because they didn't have constant live warfare to test in. While French jets like the Rafale became excellent multi-role platforms, Israel's jets became smarter, more connected, and optimized for the exact threats they face. That battlefield-driven innovation, powered by real-time intelligence and rapid development, pushed Israel far ahead in avionics, one of the most decisive areas of modern air power. 
Now imagine a country that doesn't just build jets, but upgrades U.S. jets so effectively that the U.S. military studies THIR modifications. That country is Israel. When the F-16 arrived, Israel didn't treat it as a finished product. They reprogrammed it, reconfigured its avionics, added local sensors, enhanced its weapons compatibility, and created variants like the F-16I SUFA, considered one of the most advanced F-16s ever built. France, meanwhile, produced the Rafale strong, capable, and technologically sophisticated, but Israel's approach of continuous micro-upgrades allowed their jets to stay ahead in electronic warfare, targeting, and smart weapons integration. Israel treated every aircraft like a software platform, not a static machine. They upgraded it like a smartphone. New radar modes added, new missile integrated, new jamming pod tested next week. This mindset created jets that didn't need to be the newest, just the smartest. While France built excellent aircraft, Israel built intelligent aircraft, constantly adapted for real battlefield environments. That mindset pushed them light years ahead in agility and modernization. Israel's missile revolution is where the real gap began, France had powerful missiles like the Maike and Meteor, but Israel focused on speed of development and battlefield flexibility. The turning point was the Yom Kippur War, where Israeli aircraft were devastated by Soviet-made SAMs. Most countries would spend years analyzing the failure. Israel responded instantly. Within months, they created new anti-radiation missiles, new jammers, new decoys, and new evasion tactics. Then came the game changer, the Python Air to air missile series. The Python 5 is still one of the most advanced dogfight missiles in the world. 360 degree lock on insane agility and helmet queuing. France took longer cycles to develop similar weapons. Add to that the Derby missile, which gave Israel a compact, fast locking BVR capability. The pattern was clear Israel doesn't build missiles for theoretical wars. They build them for enemies they face weekly. This accelerated feedback loop allowed them to outperform even large European powers. But the biggest leap wasn't offensive missiles, it was defensive systems. France had strong air defense, but nothing like what Israel created. The Iron Dome changed everything, not just for Israel, but for the entire world. And Iron Dome was only the beginning. Israel also built uh, David's slings for medium range threats, uh, Arrow 2 and Arrow 3 parse for ballistic missiles, uh, multi-layered fusion radar networks. What makes Israel's system superior isn't just interception, it's integration. The entire network talks to each other. A missile launched in Syria, a drone in Lebanon, and a rocket in Gaza are tracked simultaneously by systems working in perfect synchronization. France has no parallel structure. Israel's multi-layer defense was built because they face missile attacks constantly. That pressure pushed them into solving problems no other country aggressively faced. Their missile defense architectures became templates studied worldwide. Another advantage Israel holds is autonomy. France builds weapons for export politics and alliances. Israel builds for survival. This creates different priorities. A France designs for long-term NATO integration. Lay Israel designs for immediate war. France spreads R&D across industries. Israel packs it tightly inside defense clusters where AI engineers, drone specialists, cyber units, and missile developers all work side by side. This tight loop ecosystem allows decisions to be made in hours, not months. When a new threat appears, say a new Iranian drone, Israel can adjust software, sensors, and intercept logic almost instantly. France, with larger but slower bureaucratic structures, can't match that tempo. This is why Israeli jets, radars, and missiles feel like living systems constantly evolving based on real threats. Israel's intelligence advantage played a massive role, too. Mossad, Unit 8200, and military intelligence feed real-time threat data directly to engineers. When Israel develops a missile or radar, they already know the exact specs of enemy radars, drones, missiles, and aircraft. 
They don't guess, they design against real data. France has world-class intelligence, but it isn't fused as tightly with military R&D. Israel turned intelligence into an engineering tool. That link gave Israel a massive head start in electronic warfare, jamming algorithms, and countermeasure design. Their systems don't just defend, they predict attacks before they happen. The final piece of Israel's rise is innovation culture. France has brilliant engineers, but Israel has battlefield engineers, people who grew up repairing, hacking, and modifying systems under fire. The concept of chutzpah, boldness, translates into engineering decisions. If a system isn't good enough, Israeli teams break it apart and rebuild it. They experiment constantly, even during combat. France follows strict, clean development pipelines. Israel follows rapid combat, driven prototyping. This mindset produces breakthroughs like for autonomous drone Swan AI, powered targeting I super, compact radars, a smart missile seekers, adaptive electronic warfare suites, Israel's startup ecosystem also helps. Thousands of defense related startups feed the military with new ideas every year. This dynamic, messy, fast paced ecosystem produces technology France simply cannot replicate within traditional government structured frameworks. So how did Israel surpass France? By doing everything differently, France relied on structure, Israel relied on pressure. France improved slowly, Israel upgraded constantly. France built traditional aerospace, Israel built intelligent aerospace. Israel's edge wasn't in size, budget, or bureaucracy. It was in mindset, adapt fast, learn fast, and never wait for someone else to protect you. Today, Israel's avionics, missiles, EW systems, and air defense networks are among the most advanced on Earth. They transformed from a dependent nation to a global arms innovator studied by the US, Europe, and Asia. And all of this happened because one embargo forced them to innovate or die. Israel chose to innovate, and now the world is watching. If you found this breakdown powerful and eye-opening, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe for more deep defense analysis, and drop a comment on which country comparison you want next. Your support helps us bring you the truth behind global military tech. Clear, detailed, and without the noise.